Hi there, my name is Vince from mrtelephone.co.uk and in this video today I'm going to show you a real working example of how you can send the signal from, for example, your set-top box to all the TVs in your house via HDMI. Now, in this particular video I'm going to show you the example that I've got in my house which is distributing the Virgin Media set-top box and also a little Roku media player but this would work for Apple TV, it would work for a DVD player, your Xbox One, your PlayStation, anything with a HDMI that you want to send throughout your house, it will work. Or, for example, if you've got a bar, a restaurant or whatever, and you just want to play, for example, a DVD player to two, three, four TVs, then it's the same setup that I'm going to show you in this video. Now, in case you're not aware what HDMI is, it's this little connector here. HDMI is a really good quality. They allow the picture and the sound to go down the one cable and also they, uh, they allow a really good picture as well. So for example on my Roku 2 it transmits in at 1080 and uh, yeah the, the pictures on my TV when I use that for watching for example Now TV or Netflix are perfect because I've got a good internet speed coming up to the house as well they are they are uh, transmitting in full HD so it's uh, so, so they're good leads you've probably already got these you're probably aware of what these are these are the things that connect your your set top box to your TV or your Xbox to your TV they're really common they've been around for quite a few years now so basically I'm going to show you under the stairs how I've set mine up, but that's only the one part of it that I'm showing, which is under the stairs where the splitter is. But I'm just going to draw a quick diagram on this whiteboard here, just to show you roughly what the cables do. It might be a bit unclear when we go under the stairs, so I thought I'd do this first, just to show you the, the rough layout of the cables, and then you'll have a better idea of when, we're, when, when we go under the stairs. So, basically, if we were to have our... your set top box here. Normally you would have a HDMI out into your TV and it would work fine. But let's say now I want my set top box to work on four different TVs in this house. I don't know how well you can see that with the light. But uh, I want it to work in four different TVs in this house. So instead of putting the, uh, the HDMI cable into the TV. Pretend I've got another TV here, and another TV here, and another TV down here. So it's really simple. All you do is HDMI out of the set top box in to a HDMI splitter. Also, it could be called an amplifier, and then from here you would have four outputs so you would have one input and four outputs and each output goes to each TV and it is as simple as that so basically you would have one lead from your set top box to the HDMI splitter sorry that's really hard to see because the lights bouncing off the board and also my handwriting is atrocious but hopefully you'll be able to see you'd be able to work it out. So you would have one lead connecting your set-top box to the HDMI splitter and then you would have four other long leads from the HDMI splitter going to each TV. Now in my house I've uh, the HDMI leads are roughly 10 to 15 meters and uh, the leads that go from for example the set-top box into the HDMI are only short because it's all under the stairs. But the good thing about these HDMI, DMI, uh, HDMI splitters is that they regenerate the signal. So for example, if you were to maybe want a 20 meter run on HDMI, you're gonna struggle, and this is a really good quality cable. It will probably pixelate or it might not work at all. You might not get any signal at all. But if you were to run a 10 meter up to the HDMI, and then maybe another 10 meter from there onwards, then it boosts the signal, so you'll have more chance of it working. But what I would say, it really depends on the cables you get, because I think some of the cheaper cables might not be using copper. I think they might be using aluminium. So because they're digital, if they work, they work and they're going to work as well as an expensive cable so you don't have to go out there and spend £40 on cables but just bear in mind when you're doing longer lengths it is quite important for the cable to be good quality but if you do get a cheaper cable 
try it and if it works that will work as good as a really expensive cable because it's digital so it's either going to work or it's not going to work it's either going to see the signal or it's not going to see the signal but what I would say is before you start running any of these cables around your house just test it out on a bench to begin with. So just lay it across the floor and see if it works because you don't want to spend ages installing the HDMI cables to then find out that they're too long and they're not going to work because you might buy a 10 meter cable off eBay or Amazon and that's going to work on its own because they're not going to make a 10 meter cable that doesn't work. But if you're putting that into the HDMI splitter and then feeding it with a five meter cable, it might be enough to put you over the limit. So test it all beforehand. But in my house, I've definitely got some runs that are over 15 meters and it works fine. But I did test them all out beforehand because sometimes when I tried certain leads, a combination of different leads, they didn't always work. So you need to make sure you test the leads beforehand. So what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm gonna turn the video off, we're gonna go under the stairs, and hopefully now you'll have a, a good idea of the layout. I'm gonna show you how I've connected up my set-top box and my little Roku media player to all the TVs in my house using these HDMI splitters. And I've also had to connect up a little IR emitter receiver to uh, allow me to be able to change the channels on my Virgin Media set-top box. Now, normally you would have your set-top box by your TV and you would plug a HDMI cable in, which is this white cable here, that would go up and plug into your TV. So with this little Roku box, again, HDMI out and it would be connecting to your TV. But in this instance here, in this house, I've got four TVs and I didn't want to pay for a set-top box on each one. Also, I'm quite happy with just a one Roku player, but I wanted the flexibility of being able to watch it wherever I can. Now, the downside of this setup is you have to watch what the box is playing. So if you're watching Sky News or BBC One or whatever you're watching on this set-top box, then every single TV, when you turn it on to the particular HDMI, so for example, if it's HDMI input 2 that you connect it to, then every single TV will be displaying Sky News or BBC, whatever's playing on here. The same on this little Roku box here. If you're watching Netflix on this, then every single TV that's connected to this will be watching the same Netflix channel. You can't watch different things in different rooms, but for me that's not a problem because it's not the fact that I've got like hundreds of people living in this house, they all want to watch different things. It's more the flexibility. So my son might be playing the Xbox One, which is in one room. My daughter might be watching uh, something on normal terrestrial TV, you know, free view in another room. And then I want the flexibility to go into whatever room I want and be able to watch now TV or to be able to watch Virgin Media. So that's why I've done this setup here and it, uh, it works well. So yeah, normally you would have the HDMI leads that just go into your TV. But in this instance, instead of going to the TV, they go into this HDMI splitter. So on this splitter here, turn it around, you have one input at the back and then four outputs. I've actually got two HDMI splitters here. One for my Virgin Media and the other one down the bottom for my Roku box. So what you have to do is you have to run these HDMI cables to every single room in the house, remembering that HDMI carries picture and sound. So that's all you need and it's great quality too. And uh, yeah, that's it. These particular HDMI splitters are one in to four out. Okay, but you can get bigger ones. You can get one in to eight out. And uh, there's all different varieties. You can get like, you know, I've had to buy two units here, but you can get one unit which takes in two inputs to, for example, eight outputs. And then you can switch between them all. So they're, they're, they're really is good. So do your, do your own research on Google on that one. And uh, for something like the Roku, it works really well because the Roku remote control works via Bluetooth. And the, but the signal, because I'm under the stairs here, the signal is a little bit hit and miss. But they've come out with an app that you can download on your mobile, and it's a basically a remote, it's a remote control on your mobile. And because it's connected to the same network as my router, because the Ro Roku's on the same network as my router, it works brilliantly, and that really does work. So that solves the problem of having to change the channels. So anywhere where I get Wi-Fi, I can change this Roku, <laughs> the channels of the Roku. But the problem comes with the set-top box. So if you're just using your uh, Roku player, then that's fine, this will work. Or if your equipment works via Wi-Fi to change the channels, then that's all you have to do. But because this set-top box uses an old-fashioned remote control, you know, uh, infrared, then what I've had to do is I've had to install this infrared emitter 
and receiver units here. Now I've really done a separate video on this, so I'm not gonna to talk too much about it, but basically all it is, is uh, I've got only one emitter here. You can have up to six emitters, but I've only got the one, which is for the Virgin Media here. And then basically I've had to stick the emitter on here. You will have to find out the best place to stick it because if I was to stick it over here, it wouldn't work. But what I did is I got somebody in the other room to keep changing channels because I set up the receiver first by the TV. And then I kept moving this emitter around the place until I seen the channel numbers going up and down. And when I seen the channel numbers going up and down, I then sort of fine tuned it. I moved it around until it was working perfectly and stuck it down. These come with little bits of sticky tape on them so you can stick them down and it does work perfectly. Now, because my TVs are quite a long way away from this little emitter here, I've had to actually run it down Cat 5E wiring. So the, the, the receiver comes out here. The receiver's the bit that goes on the TV that actually receives the signal from your remote control and uh, you put your emitter onto the actual piece of equipment. So for example, your DVD player or your set top box. So what I've done is I've basically cut the leads that come with them and I've stuck RJ45 plugs onto the end. I use pins four, five and eight. But I have done a video on this already so you can find that on my YouTube channel. And then I've patched it through to the uh, corresponding socket which is near the TVs and then I've put the end of the receiver lead with an RJ45 plug on to match the cable and to match the wiring again which is pins 4, 5 and 8 and basically the signal then just goes via the lead through all my Cat6 wiring out to the other end and comes out on the receiver and it works fine I don't have any issues with it at all but obviously if this was going to be near to your TVs then you would just run because these leads are normally like quite long anyway they're five or ten meters or you can buy little extensions you can buy little this is a 3.5 millimeter jack some of them are 2.5 millimeters but just get yourself a 10 meter extension lead for a few pound off eBay they're not expensive and then you can just have you can just extend the signal uh, problem is you're probably going to be just running it under the carpets or something and they're not very strong wires so just just be wary of that but as I say I've done a separate video on that but that's the setup that I've done here and it works well so hopefully that will give some of you out there some ideas of uh, how to do it obviously it is a lot of hassle running the HDMI cables everywhere but I was running cat 6 everywhere at the same time so it was no bother just to throw a few HDMI cables there as well just to quickly show you that's one TV working on the Roku and then we should have the same signal on every single TV in the house. So again, there. Here. And here. And as far as those little IR receivers go, they're on all the TVs as well. Well, they're on three of them. And they're these little things here. They just stick on with sticky tape. And they go up to my little... RJ45 socket here and again the pins are mimicked so it will be 4, 5 and the shielding's on 8 but as I say I've already done a video on that so you can check that one out in more detail.